Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This week's video is one that I'm really excited about and have been planning for a while. Um, and it is all of my favorite places and recommendations in Seoul. I've spent about seven months there in the past two years, which is really crazy. Uh, five over my gap year and then two this past summer. Um, so I'm super excited to, you, to present to you guys like my super unofficial, but also sort of tried and true, at least on my end, a uh, guide of all my favorite places throughout the city. Before that, I just wanted to say, I think I'll be saying this for a couple of videos, but I did just get wisdom teeth surgery recently, um, and so that's why I'm a little swollen slash like might have a little bit of a harder time like talking or smiling. I'm so sorry, but please be patient with me. I am trying to pre-film all my stuff before I go to France, so we push through the pain. I also promised the last chatty video for a while. I know there's been kind of like a string of chatty videos on my channel um, but I guess I just have a lot to say in this period um, of my life but there will be a lot of exciting things coming and um, a lot of vlogs and more kind of active vids in the future so look forward to that um, and with that let's get on to the places in Seoul the first place I want to talk about are my favorite restaurants throughout the city Seoul is truly one of the best places to eat your heart out um there's so so much good food so much affordable food and that goes for like street food or a little bit more like fine dining everything in between there's just so much great food in the city and also in the country. I ended up probably eating out more than I cooked in Seoul uh, and I was still on a budget. So these places are really truly delicious um, and have a lot of affordable options. So I hope you check them out. The first place is Thanks O in Yeonnam. I've taken you there many times in my vlogs, but it's sort of like a breakfast brunch yogurt bowl place um, with really great yogurt selection. I think they make their own Greek yogurt in kitchen every morning. They also have bagel sandwiches and um, a lot of tea and coffee coffee selection as well and if you're like me and you don't really like super heavy breakfast then I think it's such a good option um, their granola is really delicious as well and each bowl is consistently under like 9001 um, so super affordable they always have really peaceful music and kind of natural lighting and greenery in there um, so I would really recommend either going alone or just going with a friend for a little bit more of a quiet brunch second place is Areno ramen um, there's a couple of locations the one I frequented was in Hapjong um, so so good this is like a michelin guide restaurant i believe um that specializes in japanese ramen again each bowl is i think under 9000 or 10001 and they have free refills of the noodles but also all of the toppings and so you can essentially get two bowls for the price of one if you're really hungry i personally am not even a huge fan of ramen i also took a friend who wasn't a huge fan um and we still loved it so much it's a really good option if you kind of want nicer food but definitely still on a budget and um it's a really great dining experience the next place is a restaurant called Sajikdong Kugage. Um, I'm not really sure if they have an English name. I think it might be Rogpa, but I'll put both um, in the description so you can look it up. This restaurant has a really cute kind of cozy, homey vibe, um, and the kitchen really feels like just like a home kitchen, um, and the workers always seem like the coolest people, and I want to be friends with them. They specialize in uh, Tibetan curries, um, chai, lassi, things like that. I went here a lot this year um, just for the vibes. I love to get um, their chicken curry which is a little spicy, um, get a iced soy chai on the side and then finish it off with a salted lassi afterwards. I think the owner is actually Tibetan or went to Tibet um, and decided to create this restaurant and they donate some of their profit to Tibetan schools and kind of free Tibet causes. Um, so that's really lovely as well. Just a beautiful area again and a really calm lunch. Next, if you're looking for some really good Thai food in Seoul, uh, there's a place called Tuk Tuk Noodle Thai in Yeonnam. This is a slightly pricey your lunch dinner option I would say everything is probably between 13 to 20,000 won I love their tom yum kung I also love their pad thai um, and again it's really hard to find Thai food with all of the spices done right in Korea and this place does it so well I think they are also part of the Michelin guide um, so if you want kind of like a nicer lunch um, and you're craving Thai food in Korea this is definitely the spot and you find from the summer that I really really loved is a restaurant called Shinpyo Malang Kama Malang um, in Mule. This place does very home style like Korean cooking um, with rice, a soup, and a lot of different side dishes, pantan. With food like that, it's really hard to find a place where all of the pantan and the soup and everything is really delicious and also isn't too salty or sweet and feels very healthy. Um, and this place feels like somewhere I could go to eat every single meal. 
meal three times a day. The lines do get really long though, so show up earlier than 11.30 if you can. I believe that's their opening time, or just know that you'll probably be waiting a while on the wait list. I also went alone once, and it was a really great place to eat alone, so if you're solo traveling, definitely check it out as well. My next restaurant fave is this place called Mashinen Kaiwuksu. Uh, it's kind of like a local favorite um, near Chingsan. Yeah, it just does kaiguksu, which is like um, knife cut noodles in really warm broth. Um, and their kimchi is unreal. Like, prop I wanted to take that stuff home. It was so good. It just feels like a very classic local neighborhood spot um, that fills up a lot during the evenings and weekends. Um, so if you want to kind of feel like a Korean local, this is a really great place. Next place on my list is Chicken in the Kitchen. Um, they also have a couple of locations, but the one I go to a lot is in Hongdae. They are a fried chicken place um, and they always also have like 90s music playing and the 90s music videos playing in the background, which is really funny. The windows open when it's not as hot um, and sometimes on a rainy day or something you can hear the rain as you're eating which is really lovely and I just love the chicken I know there's so many fried chicken spots in Korea and a lot of people will get takeout and stuff like that but if you want to go somewhere and kind of have a more like gourmet chicken experience I would definitely recommend chicken in the kitchen and the last place on my list is a new find called sushi in June this is also in the Hongdae area and it's just a sushi place um, that does really good lunch specials they have a special that is 10 pieces of sushi um, and I think a udon or like a memil kuksu, like the cold uh, noodle, soba noodles. And um, that set, I believe, is under 12,001 for lunch. So we went a couple of times because on, honestly, sushi that cheap is like unfathomable to be in the US. Um, and they always have really fresh ingredients, so delicious. Again, if you're looking for some really quick bites that are really good, uh, sushi in June is a great spot. Long list of restaurants, but next I have cafes. Um, probably after restaurants, cafes are my favorite place to be in Seoul. I love Seoul's cafe culture. I know that's why a lot of people go and um, people are excited to experience, but I truly think that it is like no other place um, in terms of the way that people treat cafes. But almost everyone in Korea, after you eat out or, or eat a meal, you go and get a coffee. And I feel like if in the US, a lot more cafes are a little bit more oriented for work or people studying. Um, there's kind of a mix in Korea where there's cafes where it's really just only people socializing and hanging out with their friends. And then others where it feels a lot more like quiet and study vibes. So there's kind of a mix of both here. But as you know, I spent so much time in cafes this summer and all of these had something that brought me back a couple of times, which is really special. It would not be a Seoul favorites list without Kopi Hanjan. This is a cafe that is in the Sochon area right next to Sajikdong Kugage, actually the place with the good curries. And the cafe owner has been running this cafe since the 80s. Feels so cozy, so homey. Um, all of the things you can tell, he put a lot of attention into the decor um, and it feels like sort of like an 80s like time capsule in a way. It's just this one kind of uh, middle-aged man who is making all of the coffee and you can really tell that he is super passionate about coffee. Sometimes it rains um, and the whole cafe is filled with sounds from his record player and it is just my favorite place to be in Seoul. Uh, the only thing about this cafe is that it doesn't allow screens, so no laptops or iPads or anything like that. Um, so go with a book or a notebook or a friend and just really soak in all of the positive energy. The next place is Tangini Chek Baijonsu or a Book Plant in Mangwon. Um, this is a bookstore cafe, I think uh, a really good place to study or write or read. They have a bookstore on the first floor and the second floor is the cafe and it just feels very simple and clean but also kind of cozy and you can tell the owner put a lot of attention into making it um, super warm and inviting for everyone. Yeah, I love to study here. I love to write here. Um, so I would definitely recommend it if you're in the Mangwon area or you need a place to kind of have a more quiet afternoon. I'm cheating a little bit with this fun because this is in Cheonju, but uh, it's a cafe called Hyonetan. I only went once on a, a Cheonju trip, but it was enough to uh, fall in love. Yeah, they have the most beautiful windows and curtains um, and they don't really turn on any other light except for the natural light um, in the afternoon if it's sunny. It was probably like my favorite like cafe aesthetic which is like a little bit like 
darker wood but then also like natural light and like plants when we were there it started pouring and he started playing cigarettes after sex and it was just like this vibe is impeccable so if you're ever in Chenju, uh definitely check out that cafe the next cafe is hangnim dabang which is in the hewa area this cafe has been standing for i believe over 50 years in the exact same place and they've done a really good job to maintain kind of the vibe that it had when it was kind of like a hub for university students um, around like the 80s and 70s yeah it's kind of like booth style seating um, like the drinks they range from like traditional kind of Korean teas to like coffee sitting there really feels like you're in a time capsule I have some film photos that I might put up um, here that really show how like old it feels when you're in there next is a cafe called anthracite um, there's a couple of locations but the one I really like is in Namwon um, super super quiet cafe I would definitely go to work they have really good coffee blend selection and also just huge floor-to-ceiling windows lots of natural light but really quiet like I said um, if you are going to study um, or if you want to get some work done definitely recommend this cafe next is a cafe called Mokoji also in Jinsan. I kind of stumbled upon this cafe and fell in love it's a young woman who runs the whole cafe and makes all of her drinks herself I think she's kind of like a neighborhood fixture because all of the moms like really love chatting with her and it's just a very chatty cafe that you can tell all the locals sort of know each other and know her um, and so it's really nice to just sit in there and eavesdrop and kind of you know be like a fly on the wall while all of this is happening so I would definitely recommend checking that out as well the next cafe is Chekuro um, or Check and Grow near Mapo and this is kind of like a study cafe um, um, the one with the amazing view of the Han River. Uh, they always have like classical music in there and books if you want to read, um, but also yeah, seating along uh, the window that's super nice and a lot of people do work here. And then there is also an area outside where you can sit and chat. The drinks tend to be a little bit more expensive, but it is for the view. So I love going here um, just to feel kind of like really peaceful and watch the sunset. The next cafe on my list is Fritz Coffee. Uh, this is a really popular coffee spot in Korea. Um, um, really famous for just having really tasty coffee and I definitely agree their coffee is always top-notch I think it's the kind of best all-around cafe on this list you can work you can talk there is always good music there's always good coffee and good pastries there's really nothing that it lacks definitely check out Fritz it's also near Mapo as well next I wanted to talk about some shops and stores in Seoul I obviously did a lot of shopping and there are so many cute little boutiques and independent shops in Seoul uh, that have such great selection um, and so these are are some of my favorite. The first is a shop called Be OK. Um, it is in Hongdae. They have ceramic stuff, they have mugs, cups, plates, stickers, sticky notes, keychains, anything and everything. I think they have rugs, um, rings, hair clips, just a lot of really cute stuff from independent artists in the area. It took a lot in me to not buy the whole store every time I went in. And yeah, I think it has a great selection. Some of the boutiques tend to be really small in Korea, but this one is a little bit bigger. And also you can always get a coffee and take a little bit of a rest while you're looking around as well. Next is a book plant again. It was probably one of my favorite bookstores that I found in Korea. If you can read it in Korean, um, I would definitely check them out. They have such lovely selections and they also have um, sort of the scroll on the side of the wall that says the top 10 picks of that week every week. Um, so it's really nice just to see what other people are into. Um, great bookstore vibes. Next is a store called Object. There are a couple locations, I think one in Gangnam and then one in uh, Hongdae. They also do the same thing as BOK, okay, but on a larger scale, just a bunch of independent artists. I love the stuff here. There's a lot of quirky and kind of cute, unique things that you wouldn't see anywhere else. Um, and I can get lost here for hours. Next is is a bookstore but in Gangneung. It's called Gore Tekbang Gore Bookstore. Um, if you're ever in Gangneung to see the beach, definitely stop by this bookstore. It is really beautiful, has like three or four floors um, with a reading area and just their selection is really wonderful. They have bread and pastries as well. I just loved the vibes. So it was such a surprising find when I went there for my solo trip. Next is a little funny one. Um, I love the Dongdaemun Shijang, um, the Dongdaemun market for their beads. They have so much 
collection for beads, for fabric, for books, for hats, for everything you can think of, the Dongdae Munchijang probably has it. So it's a really cool experience just to see this very unique part of Korea, of Seoul. Um, and the bead market truly does have every bead that you can think of. And I've had such a fun time making um, a new hobby of creating necklaces and stuff. So if you're into that stuff, definitely check out Dongdae Moon Market. And the last place is um, a thrift store that I went to a lot of times. Uh, Korea can get pretty expensive for vintage and thrift shopping. Um, and a lot of the times it's just kind of stuff from Goodwill or like, you know, from other places in the US that have been uh, priced up because it's from the US. Uh, the one place that I found that I consistently found really, really great stuff is called Hongdae Vintage. They have a ton of selection as well and pretty reasonable prices. I think everything was between like 9,000 to 20,000 won, um, which is really great. Yeah, definitely check them out if you are looking to thrift in Korea. Next, I have some places that I really just loved to visit, um, like outside or in nature. I know there's a ton of touristy spots in Korea, but these are just some of my personal favorites. One place I love to hike is Ansan. Compared to a lot of the other mountains in Korea, it's less of an intense hike, so you don't necessarily have to wear like all your hiking gear and make it like the whole afternoon. There's a trail that goes around the mountains that's much easier to walk, and then a trail that goes up to the top, and the view is really beautiful as well of the whole city. A lot of mountains in Korea that you can climb, but if you're looking for a more chill hike that you can do somewhat regularly, Ansan is definitely my favorite. In terms of palaces, my favorite palaces are Changgyeonggung and Toksogong. I think this is all kind of personal taste, but I really like the smaller palaces that feel more like easy to walk around and more homey, I guess, as opposed to really grand and palatial. Um, and yeah, the admission fees are always under like 2,000, 3,001. Um, and so it's just a really great place to like sit and chat or um, look around at the views. Toksogong in particular has this really interesting like Western style museum with obviously the Korean style buildings. And I think that juxtaposition is really beautiful there. Um, so if you're looking for a more calm palace tourism experience, um, I would definitely check those two out. The last place is a place I stumbled upon this uh, year and it's the Cheonggun Literature Library in Buangdong. Um, wow, it's probably the most beautiful library I've ever seen. It's a Hanok library and actually the books are not in there. The books are in a library underneath. It really feels like the library kind of just emerges out of the woods and is such a peaceful place to work just to sit and watch like a mini waterfall and the whole area is really beautiful and also feels kind of like outside of Seoul as well. So if you have the chance, make your way up there. I would definitely recommend it as sort of like a day trip. I know there's a ton of museums in Korea, but the place I love the most is the Museum of National Contemporary Art in Samcheongdong, I believe. It has a real diversity of exhibitions that kind of uh, change throughout the seasons, and they always have really cool topics and themes that feel very relevant, um, and also their store is impeccable, um, so I would really recommend checking it out to see a more kind of modern style art from Korea. Two other places that aren't exactly museums, but um, places to go see things. Basically, Hyundai uh, as the company has a bunch of Hyundai card libraries throughout Seoul. Um, and there are two that I really love. The music library where you can go and listen to records from basically every artist you can ever imagine. Um, and then the cooking library, which has every cookbook you could ever imagine. And also um, a place where you can smell a lot of different spices and stuff like that. Um, you just have to download the Hyundai Dive app if you don't have the Hyundai card. And make an account and you can go on any weekday i think um, and especially the music library i just was stunned by how well it was done um, so i would definitely recommend it if you're trying to look for some kind of trendy spots okay for nightlife and bars there are a couple of spots that i found throughout my time there um, the first is bar chum in sochun um, this is definitely the priciest bar on the list i think every drink was between like 20 to 40 thousand won so definitely not cheap um, but as a lightweight it is not bad to just go and try a drink but they basically really curate their drink list and every drink is very unique to this bar and this was the bar where i discovered that alcohol could actually have so much depth and flavor and like different types of flavor so it's really cool they really treat uh these types of drinks like an art and the vibes are also beautiful dark wood like low lighting um and the bartenders are super friendly so i would definitely recommend you check it out next is nocturna saka bar in mangwon it's a japanese 
Japanese inspired bar uh, that's super cozy, kind of artsy, very small and cozy, but also always has enough people to feel like kind of alive. Another place from Chunju is Tajayang Gojang. Um, this place, literally, I could probably stay here for like hours and hours. Uh, it is a pocha, like makgeolli pub. Um, so they specialize in makgeolli, which is also happens to be my favorite like alcohol of choice in Korea. Um, and their food is so unbelievably delicious. Like maybe my favorite restaurant in terms of the food in Korea, like so good. Um, and they have so much free stuff that comes around like every 20 minutes. Um, so I would kind of, you know, book out an evening if you're in Chunju, go with your friends and just have a really good time. They have such good drinks, such good food, um, and just a, a very classic like pocha vibe. And last on the list is Hangang Park. Um, yeah, in the summer, it's a classic thing to kind of grab beers from like the local convenience store and drink at Hangang. Um, you could also order chicken or order other food. And I honestly think it's better than any bar. It's just so beautiful. Um, and there's like a light breeze and tons of people. And um, yeah, just like such incredible vibes at night. So definitely don't be scared. It's definitely not a dangerous um, area or anything at night. Um, everyone is super nice, and super well lit, and it'd be also easy to get in and out of transit wise. So I would definitely recommend going to Hangang Park with your friends at night. Sorry, my battery died, but we are back. I know that was a lot, but those are all of my favorite places from Seoul. I had a lot of fun putting this guide together and just thinking of the places I really loved visiting and went to over and over again. Yeah, I know when you visit a new place, it can seem really overwhelming or seem like all the touristy spots are where you should go. But if you want to feel a little bit more grounded or find places that are a little bit more off the beaten path or more local, I hope you check out some of the recommendations in this sort of little unofficial guide. It's my last Korea video for a little bit. Thank you so much for coming on this incredible journey with me this summer. I am so excited to go to Paris in five days. Um, so I will take you along with me in the next video. Leave me any of your recommendations from Seoul uh, down below so that I can go next time I visit. Yeah, let me know if you found this helpful and if you visit any of the places, please like and subscribe if you haven't. And other than that, I will see you in the next one. Bye.